people actually do look at and the, the kind of the urban way of looking and glancing yes, is also a kind of a sorting activity. And that is what uh, Timo's piece is about. And uh, of course then also uh, this is about face recognition and other uh, surveillance uh, uh, technologies. Uh, so I'm uh, presenting uh, Timo Wright. Uh, media artist and uh, working with uh, with a lot of photographic background, but working also with a lot of social projects. Very active in producing different things, and uh, the race code is the project that we're going to see uh, as a kind of first urban installation uh, at the Lasi Palazzi Square tonight. Yeah. So hello. Okay, this one. Cool. Um, nice that you're here. I'm going to present the race code, which is, um, as you know, a few years ago, because of economic and other um, distress and, and fears uh, in Europe and also around the world, and especially in Finland also, the, these kinds of right-wing sentiments have arisen, and this kind of openly racist or deflammatory speak has, been, has become more... Um, it, it, it has become more and has become also more, more accepted as also uh, what we just heard about other minor about minorities, but also about race, about na nationality and so on. And uh, during last year we had the, elementary, the elections in Finland and the right-wingish party had won with a landslide or was very well presented there and, and, and before that and also afterwards this kinds of um, these kinds of talk in the media and in the internet and also in just day-to-day -day life about these ideas that there's something that there would be something different in between so-called races or nationalities or people or peoples uh, has become acceptable in some way especially those who have now been in Finland for maybe a few days have maybe heard about the black Mannerheim case where this Finnish icon this um, war hero has been, there's a new film about him where, where the actors, it's a, it has been shot in Kenya, in Africa, and it's like people are going mad about it, that how can this happen, and you know, it's very silly. And also, I'm really waiting for that film. So um, after the elections, I had this idea, I want to do an a installation, a piece about, about this kind of idea that is there really something different, different or is there differences between us as as people, and especially there was an interesting um, uh, article, a, uh, a survey about where people were asked about, do they think that may, that sub-Saharan people are um, good neighbors, or do they do they believe that they are equally, like mentally, equal as we are, and and there was I think for this question maybe 25 or 30 percent said that. Sub-Saharan people are not capable of the same things that we are here in Finland, which is, you know. But um, so I, I, we thought, let's do a computer that will rate people according to their racial, so-called racial value. And I'll show you the quick, uh, the short one-minute video, and then I'll t explain more. So what happens here is that the viewer enters this installation. He will, he or she will see a, uh, depending where it is presented, a uh, 10 meter wide a projection of people who have been before there in neat order rows. And then there's this, uh, the computer, the, the install, uh, the, how do you would say it, this kind of a 
camera installation uh, where, where you, will, you will sit down and the camera will take a picture of you and then according to your facial values, where your nose, your eyes, everything like that is, it will rate you to, to the upper, upper class or the lower class. Of course, as you understand, there isn't any code by which you could do that, but the program, uh, it does make a, um, a calculation, but then the code by which it rates these people is, of course, uh, made up because it's not possible to rate people by any means, actually. Uh, but, the pe but the people who come to see it don't actually know that, so many of them believe that this actually, because it is a computer, because it is calculating and analyzing, they think that this might actually be true. And the interesting is to see how people react to it. Do they think, um, whoa, this work actually works? Or do they think this cannot work? Because for me, of course, the idea is, is that when you sit down and you see where you place, you will understand that, of course, it cannot be true because it's, it's not possible. And so this is a quite simple, but yet very, very powerful uh, kind of a tool to trick the viewer and to also to make them confront their own self about what they think about themselves and, and their position with uh, other people and other so-called races. And we're to today, and uh, we're presenting this at the uh, Lasipalatsi area from uh, quarter past 10 until 12, and then on weekend, I don't remember. Anyway, in the evening time. Please come by and check it out for yourself, and if you have any questions, we'll be there and you can ask, or if you want to discuss or comment or, or say something about that, that would be really nice. Thank you very much. Timo, please stay here, and also Jaakko, if you come, we'll take a few questions together. So. You, of course, can meet Jaakko after 7 in Bebak and then Timo after 10 in Lasi Palazzi if you want to talk more. But before the panel, I think it's fair that we take questions to Jaakko and uh, Timo, if you have any about these works. We explained everything. <laughs> we explained everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's all clear. Please. Oh. Thank you very much for the presentations. And this is a question which I'd like to ask both of you, which is about how much the site specificity of where you're showing the piece affects the way you actually want the audience or the people who are passing by to perceive it and how difficult or easy it's been to determine what kind of piece you can make if it has to be in more than one site. Well, with the Hey Homo piece that we, we already knew while while making it, that it's going to be in many different places. So it's, it's actually in the park today, it's going to be in Budapest later in September, and it will be in a, in a gallery here in Helsinki after, at the end, very end of September. So they're like three very different social contents and, and physical as well. And of course it was really challenging, but I think that also makes the piece very interesting because I think I mean, I think it would be really interesting to take it in the middle of a shopping mall or something like that and, and see what, how people react. Because, of course, I mean, like I was saying about starting the whole piece of, of presuming that the world is so tolerant and then really finding out not, it's not. So I think taking it into different social contents is interesting. But, of course, physically challenging. I mean, you have to guard it and, I mean, like... Today, today is going to be physically challenging because it's raining and it's outside. And uh, with the race code, actually, the same thing applies here also. We had the first exhibition in a gallery, which is, of course, people who are interested in the subject to, uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning already. But then today we'll be presenting in the outdoors, which is something that I'm, I'm myself very excited about, and that's... I think where it should be. I'm, in my thoughts and ideas, it would be presented all the time in a shopping mall or in a pub, public space. And uh, in October, we're going, to present, we're going to present it in Brussels. We're going to pro project onto the Jewish Museum, which, and they actually asked for it, which is really something I'm looking forward to because they asked that, could we please have it there? And that's, I think they're quite, they have quite the balls to do that. So I, I think that's great. I'd like to add uh, to the site specificity of uh, our choice of the venues in the bear park, etc. That 
I think that one influence was that in Helsinki, you know, there th there is a gay community around the bear park thing, so it is in a very different environment than in Budapest, where it will be on public square place on the thing. So the, we really don't know, and in that way, this is a Crucible Studios artistic research also that that when you take online co content and bring it to the public space and you change the culture from a kind of a gay-friendly neighborhood in Helsinki into a largely public place in Hungary where some people might know that the new limiting legislations of the gays are they're empowered and people have actually the right-wing government is not easy on the whole gay movement at the moment. So in there, it probably is going to be extremely radical piece and possibly destroy it. And of course, it's experimental. We've been wondering with Jaakko, we get a lot of feedback on some people saying that, well, they will kick the screen out on the first thing this night. But I don't know. We we'll shall see how people react to it in a public place. To your work that uh, uh, suspects in, that everybody is a homo. <laughs> but in, in fact, it was the piece had a, had a really strong reaction before I even started filming it because it was supposed to be at a community uh, sort of festival in, in Greenwich, London. And I sent two sentences on what it was going to be. And it was completely forbidden. Half of the Art Council said that they'd resign if the piece would come there. And this was after two sentences. To make a correction, it was that uh, the board, the political board of the stream community. It, it, not only them. I, yeah. When I was there now, it was the, it was a council as well. They found it just, just to sort of have the topic out was offensive, even though, I mean, of course, England's very tolerant as well. But uh, I think that uh, I did want to try that. This is interesting. That's why Minna named the session <laughs> online and on the streets that it is an interesting contradiction that what is the liberty online and what is liberty then in physical space. And this is a very important theme.